rock, 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 Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Dynasty Show. Uh, today, it's just, it's myself, and it's uh, Jay, who's been gracious enough to grace us from his presence on his big adventure. He's filming a Hyundai commercial, as you can see. Um, so yeah, he's been kind enough to take time out of his busy schedule of filming, because I know they're rigorous over there at Hyundai about their commercials, so... Um, so yeah, Java will be back with us next week. He's been focusing on studies. I've uh, been just because been doing finals, so you, you know how that goes. But he should be back next week. Um, but yeah, so anyways, we got a very good show for you guys today. Um, so as you have all seen, um, I'm just gonna give like a little brief analysis, like you know, just talk about the playoffs real briefly, but um, not long. But yeah, as everyone is aware, the NBA, the NBA playoffs are going on. They've been a very, we've had some very crazy series. Um, we got a Miami Boston Eastern Conference final and a Golden State, Golden State Dallas Mavericks Western Unexpected. Conference final. Unexpected. Which is, yeah, I don't think anyone expected that. So, I mean, we've done enough episodes where we've given analysis pretty much about all these teams. Yeah. So, just very briefly, yeah. give me. Give me your finals matchup and your finals win. Are you still going with Golden State? I, I still got Golden State, man. If I mean, they're they're they've been there before. I'll I'll say that they've been there before. They they got the experience. Um, the team that they're up against, I think now, I think the Suns might would would have posed a, a different matchup for them but i think mavericks is a little easier because i don't think i don't think they can keep up with their offense um as you can see last by last night's uh debacle and they just massacred them boys um but i still i still got golden state and i still like boston and i still like golden state to win it clay's yeah. been playing good yeah uh -huh. i mean clay's clay's been playing excellent Curry's back playing, you know, his ball. Pool is the third wheel now. I don't see that. I don't I don't see I don't even see Boston or either Miami stopping um their offense. Their offense is very they they do a lot of ball movement, a lot of uh if you watch Curry and Clay, they're always moving when, when even when they don't have the ball. So their their offense is very complex. Um and when the boys get hot, ain't nothing you could do. So I say go. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. I guess I, I'm gonna go with you with the matchup. I agree with the matchup. I think it's gonna be Boston. I think it's gonna be Golden State. Um, I think Golden State over in general is a much better team than Dallas. But don't be surprised if Dallas takes a few games in the series. Takes takes two or three. I mean, I think it's. It's a possibility they push to seven. I think it's more likely it goes to six. But Dallas can definitely win a couple games in this series. I give them. They can one, definitely turn some heads win some one. games. I'm not saying they're gonna work that. Hey, I'm not saying they're gonna win the series. Dallas is not in this series, but they're gonna win a couple games in this series. I just think Luke is too good. Um, so obviously they need a lot. They need more in Dallas. Like this isn't their year. Like they've had a great season, but they need more in Dallas than just Luka Doncic. But as you can see, Luka does a lot for him. Um, and then, yeah, Boston on the other side. I just still think Boston's the best defensive team remaining. Um, just how they play together, too. This team's hungry. This team wants it. You can just tell. You can watch their competitive fire. There's a lot of, like, there's a lot of times where they're like, we're not going to get beat. And if they do get beat, like, I know they lost game one of the Bucks. They just like they lost game one of the Heat. Like, by a pretty big margin, they're not going to let that happen again. I can assure you that. Like, they didn't let that happen against Milwaukee. They're not going to let it happen again. You know? Yeah. Both would be interesting series. But, yeah, I got Boston winning it all. I, what, so, what you got that series? I got, I got that series going seven. After after game yeah, I one, I say seven. I say seven. 
But um, yeah, that series goes seven. I give I give Luca. I give I'm gonna give Luca two games. Really, I only want to give him one, but I'll give him two. But I just don't see I don't see Golden State allowing Luca to beat them. That's that's what I'll say. The way he the way he dominated the Suns, I don't see that happening versus Golden State. I know Kerr Kerr's gonna have a game no. for him. I don't I don't see that happening. Just like with game one. Kerr's, I mean, yeah, Kerr's always gonna have a game plan for it and all that. But they, they made the others. Here. They made Luka's the others try his. to beat them. It, last night game, they tried because Bull, I think Bullock had a bunch of threes he missed. Um, Brunson had an okay game. Dinwiddie, he really didn't. You know, Dinwiddie didn't really do much either. You know, they were they was getting the ball out of Lucas' hands and 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 letting the other guys. You know, if they beat him, they beat him. So I think that game plan. That's why I, I don't think. They can. Yeah, I just don't think that game plan will work for every single game in the series. That's why I'm like, I think why you said well, it, though. probably two games. We're not, you're not scared of Dinwiddie? Because Luka. Nobody's scared because, of Dinwiddie. Because, no, it's not that. It's not that. It's not that at all. It's the talent of Luka Doncic and how good of a player Luka is. Is that, yeah, you can you can hold him down, but you can't hold him down every single night. It's like... You know, so you're gonna get his, so he you're, he's gonna give you his best, um, and his best is gonna like I said, it's he's gonna win one like how like two games, maybe three in the series. They're not gonna they're not gonna win the series. Dallas is not good enough to win this series, barring like a complete OKC collapse. Like everyone would have to be hurt on OKC something. Like Dallas is not winning this series, but Luca is good enough to take a game to take a couple games from Golden State. Give me that. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. You know, we'll, we'll have to. Well, it's a wait and see type thing, but I say, I say this: Luca might, Luca might get his a couple games, but I just don't see. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this: Do you think that uh, Dallas before the trade would have been a better equipped against Golden State or where they are now? Meaning with Chris Staff, you think Chris, if they still had Chris Staff, do you think they have a better chance than they do now? No. No? Only because Chris Staff probably wouldn't be playing right now. <laughs> um, so he'd be hurt, and they actually have people that are playing instead of having a wasted roster spot and then having less talent. So actually, I think they're better off without Chris Staff. Yeah. I mean, as it's been clear, they've been since the Kristaps trade. They've been a much better basketball team. Yeah, they've been playing a smaller lineup. So yeah, yeah, I'll give you that. But Kristaps also. Yeah, no, they've, played, they've a healthy a healthy Porzingis. That is a is Dallas is Dallas is a better team. I mean, I kind of always think overrated too. Kristaps. Yeah. He's, I mean, he's been hurt, so you really can't. It's, I don't know. It's hard to gauge him because he's been hurt. So, so I understand all right. that. All right. So, with that being said, that. with all that being said, we're talking about Tatum. We've been talking about Luca. With all that being said, we're gonna move on to with the younger under twenty five, uh, the under twenty five class. Age, age group. Who do you think is the real MVP? Well, let me put it this way: not under twenty-five. Who do you think is the real MVP of the NBA? Of the NBA, NBA? We know Nikola this won year. it for the for the you know ESPN and you know all that. Yeah. So, who would you say is the real the real MVP? All right. Well, the MVP Jokic is one is a real MVP. Let's Jokic. just give credit where credit is due. Jokic is was deserving of MVP. However, to answer your question, if I had if I had a hat like a vote a hat in this race a vote, I'm probably voting for Embiid. To be perfectly honest with you, for an MVP vote. 
he just the way he played all year with the adversity felt like he lost Ben Simmons. You know, Ben Simmons for the first half of the year. Then got James Harden and kind of it dealt with the same thing of, you know, not really having James Harden around and it hasn't been the same James Harden. But the one constant in that whole time was Joel Embiid. You know, he definitely carried that Phillies that that 76ers team. Um, he played, he showed what he can be when he consistently yeah. wants to be at the top of his game, you know? Yeah. Like, I mean, I've said it before when he said he's the best basketball player in the world. And this year he showed that at a consistent level. Like, you know, he wants to be, he wants, he can tell he's hungry. He's like, okay, this is my team, you know? So, yeah, if I had to give a vote, I'm going with Embiid. Um, just, I get it, like, numbers-wise, he did the same thing Jokic did numbers-wise. Like, his numbers aren't far off from Jokic's. His numbers aren't far off from uh, Giannis's. All that, you know. Um, and, yeah, I mean, even without having Ben Simmons, like, the way Tyrese played, like, you know, yeah, that helped, but the, he's still Tyrese Maxey's no Ben Simmons, no James Harden, you know. And outside of that, there really wasn't much on that Sixers team for Embiid to work with, you know. So I go and I would have to go Joel Embiid. Well, Embiid, uh, that's a good one. Um, what I was thinking about, okay, Jokic won the regular MVP. You know, I will give credit where credit is due because he, without Jokic, they not they're not a playoff team. So, <laughs> I mean, a lottery team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Nuggets so are a lottery I, team without. So you. I got to give credit where credit is due, but for me, it was out of Giannis and Embiid. Um, you made some great points on Embiid. You like you you made a great um push for Embiid to be MVP, but um, I would have to say Giannis. I would have to say Giannis. Um. For what he did, did does for that team, um, I mean, he almost single handedly by himself uh, beat the Boston Celtics without his sidekick. So I mean, without his sidekick, he he. I mean, he in in Embiid Embiid had Maxi and his sidekick, huh? I mean, you know what I mean. Embiid had Maxi and 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 Harden so I mean and they lost they lost in six no I get that so no I, I mean, know that they lost games I think Harden Giannis, was though Harden wasn't Harden yeah but he had more help what I'm saying is Joel had more help than than what uh Giannis had Giannis pretty much had to single-handedly will three wins out of, um, for the Bucks has Drew has Drew Drew, if Drew Holiday is your sidekick, yeah, you ain't going nowhere. Drew, Brooke Lopez. Yeah, but come on. Take away take you away Giannis. Take away you Giannis. Can't forget about the go Bobby Portis. Do you, so you think Milwaukee is a do you Dude, think Milwaukee Giannis isn't even player? Giannis isn't even the best player on his team? Everyone knows Bobby Portis is the best player in Milwaukee. Stop that. <laughs> No, no, Giannis. No, you're absolutely you're you're 100 right about that. Um, yeah. I think it, I think it, it even I, I, I think if you watch the series, I think you even see Giannis even even overwork himself. He had to work even harder than he he's ever had it before um, in this series. So, me, I think it was Giannis, hands down. I think a lot of a lot of times when they do MVP, they don't like <coughs> giving it to the same person, but if you really look at it, I mean, the same person is, is well deserving of it because they are the real MVP of their team. You know what I mean? They're the real MVP. So yeah. I would say Giannis, Giannis but, but Giannis MVP is one of those players in the league, like like a Luka, like a Jokic, that just had so much talent. Yeah. Yeah. They they comparing them to LeBron. As far as yeah. willing, willing his team with with you know without anybody else you know without any real 
real help with Mid especially with Middleton, Middleton being out. I mean, you got Drew, but Drew's not really a Drew's a third wheel. Drew's not really a a, a second option. He's more of a like yeah, a defense, he's a better you know? player making an option and all exactly. that. Yeah, so he's I'm, a good guard to have with a player like Jan. Exactly. He's gonna get Giannis the ball. Exactly. Exactly. You know. So I was saying Giannis is a do it all type of guy. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think I think it's between. I think you you can't go wrong with any of those guys. Yeah. Jokic, Giannis, or Embiid, or Embiid. Like one of those three. I, I just think like it has to be one of those three: Jokic, Giannis, or Embiid. Um, because just all three of those guys, they can do more than what their position asks them to do. Like all three are bigs, and they can pass, they can shoot. You know, yeah. um, they're not just bigs that run up and down the court and get you rebounds and take the easy buckets in the paint like yeah they can do that too but they can also do so much more and they add like such an extra element to their teams each one of them yeah. um with everything they can do like they're all players that just have so much talent that their talent alone can cover a lot of holes and weaknesses on your team you yeah. know yeah um so i mean that helps they're the type of player where you only really need un, you don't need two superstars you only need you know you only need them and maybe another star yeah, yeah. you know and you can go and they can carry you to championships you know i say they beat boston i say they beat boston with middleton they beat boston with middleton i i told you before it, it's not it, it's not going to make that 28 point shellacking in game seven. Any, yeah, any, you're right, but it would have never got to game any different. Like I said, maybe it makes it a 17 point shellacking in game seven, but it would make seven. You don't even go to a game seven with him. That but regardless, game, that game six. It is what it is. And yeah, yeah. That game six, I mean, I think with a middle to that game six. Could have, what could have been, you know? <laughs> Tatum, Tatum, Tatum what, don't show to the world where he's The fact of the matter is what happened. <laughs> hey, Tatum, Tatum don't show to the world where he's made of in that of game matter. six. Middleton. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, yeah. But, <laughs> hey, I guess we'll, we'll never know because the series is over. So. Yeah, yeah. But speaking of that Back series, though, speaking of that series, that was we're gonna move on to the next. Um, speaking of that series, Game Six, I think that was Tatum's coming out party. So, with that being said, do you think that Tatum, after showing, after coming through in that Game Six, do you think that Tatum? Has put himself up there in that up, ush, upper echelon in the conversation of the next goat talk. Um. Yes. I mean, as someone who's a Celtics fan and watched Tatum, yeah, he's he's. This is nothing new to us. We this is what we were expecting from Tatum. Yeah. Um. But I mean, absolutely, he's I, he's become unguardable at this point in time, um, which is a very scary thing. There's um, he's probably the best one-on-one player in the NBA at this point in time too. Like, um, and I think he's getting his comp. I think with this playoffs, especially towards like this this entire year, and with Yudoka coaching. And everything you can see it. Tatum's a lot more confident, and I think Tatum's now not afraid, and understands he has the ability to take over a game when he needs to. Um, like he knows, yeah, I don't have to do that every game. We have a good team, you know. Let me do my teammates, but when it's time for him to step up and take over, he can do that. You know, I definitely think he's at this point in time. I definitely think he's the best player at his position in the NBA currently. I think he's the best forward in the NBA. Small forward combo, you know. I would agree. 
me. I um, mean, you, I don't think so. I, I would definitely agree. He's he's well on his way. He's definitely for a young for a young player. Yeah, he's definitely in that conversation. I mean, he's only what like twenty three or something. Twenty three, twenty four. Twenty three, twenty four. So yeah. For me, he's I would. Future, Right, he's definitely uh, that mama mentality is showing in him now. Yes, finally, finally, finally. I would say yes to um, when, but like a couple of years when <clears throat> people were making, were um, having this conversation or or talks of the next go and stuff. Um, ben Simmons was up there too um, on the list. Like for me, it was Ben and Tatum. But I think now with Ben, the way Ben, he, you know, he hasn't been on the court. So, you know, we don't, you don't know what Ben, we don't know if Ben has that passion to even play anymore or whatever. So, but for me, I would say yes with Tatum. I thought he should have done this, you know, two years ago in that Miami series in 2020 when they lost. But um, I think that, I think something clicked, made made a click for him in that game six. because if you uh, seen the um, the interviews and after the game and stuff, when Marcus Smart and were talking, they was like he was saying, you know, give me the ball. You know what I'm saying? Like he wanted the ball. So I think yeah. it's a click for him, and he's seen that, yo, I can, I, I actually can do this. So I think this is just like the beginning of what we're what, of the greatness that we're going to see from Tatum. I think now from now on, I think we're going to see. That, like you said, that Mamba mentality uh, throughout his career now, you know, like, give me the damn ball. He's going to start taking over games. He's going to put the team on his back. And I think Boston actually is going to be, a, you know, a team that's year after year from now on. Um, that's going to be in the conversation of winning the championship um, because of because of him. And also because of the the foundation, I think Boston has built a good foundation um, in their you know in their organization. And if you know if you notice lately, you know Boston's been in the cover you know Eastern Conference Finals, uh, twenty twenty. You know what I'm saying? Eastern Conference Finals this year. You know, so you know they've been knocking at the door for years now. So I think you know with Boston, I mean with Tatum taking his next step. I think that Boston is, you know, it's, they have a good chance of winning it this year. If they don't win it, I think they, I think Tatum gets, gets them one soon. I think he gets them one soon, if not this year, but I think he gets them one soon, very soon. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think Brad Stevens going from head coach to GM and bringing in Udoka as the head coach. Um, I think that was the best thing for Jason Tatum. Yeah. yeah. Because, yeah, I think Brad Stevens realized like, what you said, that this kid is going to be really good. We can win championships with this kid. Like, let yeah. me fully commit to this kid. You know, okay. players and coaches that put him back as be as successful as possible. And I think Boston's fully embraced that as an organization. And yes, the future is bright for Tatum. Um, so, I mean, look, I'm hoping we can get Banner 18 this year. Um, if it's not this year, it's certainly going to be within the next couple. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If if they don't get it this year, it'll be because of uh, Golden State. I think Golden State, I think Golden State, this is probably their last, they last little run. So, I think they probably will probably get it this year just off of experience. Um, but yeah, Boston is there. Boston is there, is going to be there in a the conversation for years to come. I'm telling you, Tatum, um, if he is not already number one, the best, um, because you know, you still got LeBron, you still got KD, but I think after those, you know, LeBron, KD, maybe Giannis, I still like Tatum over Giannis because Tatum can shoot. Tatum can shoot. Yeah. And Tatum, 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 Tatum. And you have to and and, beat, and you have to respect and beat KD. Yeah, you have, beat to respect, you have to respect you have to respect Tatum more than Giannis because Giannis, you pretty much can dare him to shoot it. 
and you can kind of back off of, of Giannis a little bit and don't let him drive. With Tatum, <laughs> you don't know what to do because he can shoot it and he can go by you. So, yeah. you know, you have, to, you have to play him differently. So I like Tatum a little bit more than Giannis as far as just, me, you know, as far as talent, just his basketball skill level. Because I put Tatum uh, skill level up there with, with those guys, Kobe, you know, the, the type of moves he has. I mean, if you watch him, man, his, that little step back is, is sick he got. <laughs> yeah, it is. And his, and his shot is just, yeah. you know, his release is so high you can't, you know what I mean? I, I like this game. I mean, I've, I've liked this game since Duke, but. Oh, yeah. I didn't see this. Yeah, I'll tell you this. I didn't see this. I saw a good. I saw good, but I didn't see this. I tell you that. I mean, so, Boston only really knew about this. Yeah, and, and I, this think, is I, not, I think I think I think now they'll keep. It. Yeah, yeah. I think now they'll keep that team together too. Now. I think I think they'll find they'll keep that team together, because him they can play off each other, Tatum and Brown. Yeah, they're good compliments to each other. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So, yeah, I, I that's the baby goat, the next baby goat. <laughs> the next baby goat. <laughs> <laughs> so then, so let me ask you this, Jay. All right. So, kind of a uh, to a little get branch out range here. So you're. You're an NFL GM. You have you have to sign a wide receiver in the off season. There's three wide receivers available. Okay. AJ Brown, Debo Samuel, Terry McLaurin. Who are you signing, and why? Man, 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 man. Tough one. I'm going to go with um, Brown. I'm going to go with AJ Brown. I thought about this, and I at first I was saying I was saying Debo because of the threat of running, you know. But AJ Brown can be. He's only 24. You know, he's just scratching the surface. He's still young. I think AJ Brown has the potential, if used properly in Philadelphia, and if the quarterback is competent enough to get him the ball, I think he has a chance to be the best receiver in the league. And I didn't like AJ Brown at first, um, but just you know, watching him uh, lately. Hearing them talking about him, and he hasn't. And Tannehill is not the best quarterback, so you know. But the way he dominated in the playoff in that playoff game, and the way he can dominate—I mean, he's a big, a big receiver. So you know, I mean, he's not a small little guy, but he's a big guy. So I think he has the the chance to dominate as a receiver just because of his size, and and you know his quickness. Um, Debo. I think he's better. I think he's a better pass catcher than Debo. Um, so that's also why, another reason why I went with him. I think he I think he has the edge over McLaurin also because he's a bigger receiver. McLaurin is just fast. But I think AJ Brown has the potential. He could be like a Megatron, man, just because of of, of his body and size. If he's used properly and if you know he you know he has that drive but i see that potential in aj brown that he could be uh, uh the top receiver in the league if he wanted to be but i would take aj brown answer that question i would take aj brown aj brown aj brown you're gonna go with aj brown yes, yeah i've sir. thought about this one a lot yeah yes sir I thought about this one a lot too, um, and like like you said with Debo, Debo is just an enticing option because of 
the running versatility, but that's not he's not going to sustain that. He doesn't want to do that. Yeah. Um, I mean, Debo said he doesn't want to be used like that, but that's because he's a wide receiver and it's his longevity. You know, he like that that will give him a much shorter career running the ball like that consistently. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, he can do it. He's good at it. He doesn't want to do it. I don't blame him. Yeah. Um, so I'm not going to take Debo because I don't think uh, – I just don't think, like, that's a sustainable aspect of his game. And I agree with you that A.J. Brown is a better pass catcher than Debo Samuel. But after a lot of thought about this, mm-hmm. I'm going to go with Terry McLaurin. Yeah. I'm going to go with Terry McLaurin, and here's why. Because Terry McLaurin's played three years in the NFL. He's had eight different starting quarterbacks. Um, something like, I think it was like four or five different offensive coordinators. Um, eight different starting quarterbacks. Carson Wentz, when he starts with Carson Wentz, will make his ninth starting quarterback in, in uh, three full seasons. He's going into his fourth year. Um, but the thing about, and the reason why I mentioned that is because even with all that, if you go look, like, I know numbers don't tell the whole story, and they most certainly don't. Mm. But his numbers are identical to A.J. Brown's. <laughs> if you go look, he has 3,000-yard seasons, you know, three seasons over 75 cat like, mm. he had, I think, uh, one season where he had, like, 50-something, 50 57 catches, but he was still over 1,000 yards. Um, and he still has... Last year he was seventy-seven. Oh no, he had yeah, he had seventy-seven last year. He had eighty-seven the year before, and then something like that. But he's had over 70, 75 catches every single year of his career, over just close to or over a thousand yards. And he had nine hundred nineteen his rookie season, but after that it was ten fifty-eight and then eleven something. You know, AJ Brown has those identical numbers to that. Uh, AJ Brown will run first offense. Also, Terry McLaurin is the healthiest of those two. His health has never really been a question, whereas Debo's health has been a question dating all the way back to his days in South Carolina um, because he couldn't stay healthy in college either. AJ Brown, the injuries kind of didn't really pop up until the NFL level. I mean, I liked coming out of Ole Miss, I liked AJ Brown more than DK Metcalf. I thought AJ Brown was the much better wide receiver Mm -hmm. coming out of Ole Miss. Um, As prospects, I still kind of feel that same way, even in the NFL, like, especially with how DK has been used. He's more so just like a deep threat, like intermediate route, throwing the ball, you know, 10, 15 yards and let him run, you know, he can't come underneath. Yeah. Yeah, like, he's not going to do the nitty-gritty. He's not going to come underneath. A.J. Brown's much more versatile in his skill set compared to D.K. But, yeah, of those three, I'm just I'm going to take Terry McLaurin. Right. Works there. Um, and it, if that kid gets a quarterback, like, he could easily be one of the best receivers in the NFL. I mean, he's already he's already a fringe top 10 receiver in the NFL. That's why I say with A.J. Brown, too, though. I mean, you got to look at A.J. Brown and have a quarterback, hasn't had a quarterback either. So that's why I say if, if Hurts can get him the ball, man, I mean, he could be a scary, he could be a scary guy. I don't, I don't see what, I don't see why Tennessee, uh, I don't know what what was going on with the 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 money or the contract or whatever. Maybe because they paid Ty- Ryan Tannehill all that money, they couldn't sign him. But that was a bad loss for them. That was a big loss for them. Yeah, a huge loss. Yeah, because Traylon yeah. Burks. I mean, Traylon yes, Burks is a rookie. He's not coming in, and process. he's not coming in with those. You know, he's not gonna come in right away and be AJ Brown. Now he has Absolutely. the potential. He has the potential to become, but not right away. Especially with Tannehill. No, absolutely. Not. Especially with Tannehill. I don't In see a run it. first offense too. Yeah, I don't see it. Yeah, and Henry. How long do you think Henry has? If you, um, I don't know. I think, I think we're gonna see him. I think this is he's starting to break down because like I said, you can't work someone. It doesn't matter their size. You can't work someone nearly as much as Tennessee has worked Henry over the last four years and expect him to hold up. Yeah. Like, I don't care how big they are. None of that, you know, 
So I no hope that I hope that this injury is kind of one and done for Henry, and he can play another five years at a dominant level. But I don't think that's likely. Yeah, I don't think that's a likely scenario. I think we may get one, one, two more like healthy seasons of Derrick Henry. And then yeah, so you know, but yeah, um, but on film wise, um, to go back to what we were saying too, on the tape. If you watch two, just Terry McLaurin's more consistently open, gets better separation than the he's other a, two. He's a um, better route runner. He's I, a much I, better route runner. He's, he's a, better a much route. better route runner than AJ Brown and Debo. He can create separation at all three levels. He's a much he's a very underrated wide receiver. And I think the only reason he doesn't get the credit that like an AJ Brown and a Debo get is because one, the team that he's on, because the commanders suck, and two, he hasn't really had a quarterback that can fill his potential. Like, yeah, he's playing well, but trust me, give him a quarterback, put that man with a quarterback that can actually play, and he'll he's gonna ball out. I, I mean, a quarterback that consistently get him the ball. You make good points because, like I said, he he's a better route runner. He gets better separation, but. Like I was saying, A.J. Brown can become a, a, a Megatron. I mean, a, a Randy Moss type um, receiver. He has that. Yeah. He has that. To me, he has that potential. But we just haven't, you know, that that game, I think that game, what was that, in the playoffs where he had 170-some yards? He he destroyed uh, – who was that? Who was that that he played, they played that first game? Was it this year? Yeah, this year. Who the hell was that? Pittsburgh? Maybe? Might have been. I can't remember who it was, but he destroyed whoever it was. He destroyed. And I just, I don't know, man. I don't think we've seen, I don't even think we've seen the 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 best of A.J. Brown because of, of how, how limited that Tennessee offense was, you know, because a lot of his route tree was the, that slant, the the slants that he would, he would do. And that's where he would do a lot of routes, uh, those slant routes. So I don't think we've seen uh, all his route tree yet. And I really don't I mean, even. I don't know. I don't even think we're gonna see it in Philly either, because of the type of offense I mean, they run. We'll see. I think the thing with Philly though is that he has Devonte Smith on the other side of them. He didn't. He didn't have. He has Dallas Goddard at tight end to <laughs> also catch true. the ball. That's true. He has Miles Sanders, Kenneth Gainwell out of the backfield who can both catch the ball. I mean, yes, Philly is another run dominant team, but there's a lot more weapons in Philadelphia than there were in Tennessee. Whereas in like Tennessee, he was the the yeah, he was the guy in the yeah. past. There was no one else. Like okay, yeah, he had Julio Jones for what a, a game and a quarter. <laughs> like other than that, he was that before Julio signed was Corey Davis. Like oh. Corey Davis wasn't Corey Davis, you know. Yeah. So, and I don't see, I don't know, I just don't see Jalen Hurts would have to incredibly up his passing volume, and the Eagles have to up their passing volume as a team to support all three of those guys at a top level. I agree. You know, so I just don't know. I think they could all, I think it could end up, they could all kind of end up vulturing each other in a sense. Like, I think Philly as a team can be successful, like, even with that strategy. Um, but I think you could see a case where they actually all end up vulturing each other and none really finish with spectacular numbers on yeah. the year. Where they I finish around like AJ Brown still finishes around what he gets like like sixty five catches, a thousand yards. I think you could see that consist you know, like instead of having one dominant guy, like so it will be interesting yeah. for sure. Yeah, I said that. I said that, that the moment that they signed. I said that the moment that I seen the trade, I was like, "Well, he's going from one, <laughs> he's going from one quarterback to the other, another quarterback that's pretty much kind of the same." So it's like, 
I don't see. He, like I said, he has the potential, but I don't see. I don't see. Um, I don't see him having a big year, like you said. I don't see. But for that question, I answered him because if if I had a just say if he was at Green Bay, I would say he would have one. He would probably have a year like uh, uh, Devontae Adams. He would have the potential to have a, a big year like that in Green Bay with a quarterback. Oh, I don't think – I definitely think he could have a big year and with, like, an Aaron Rodgers as his quarterback. I don't think it would quite be a Devontae Adams level because Devontae Adams' skill is, like, next level. Yeah. <laughs> that dude's just phenomenal at playing yeah. the position of wide receiver. Yeah. Um, just do it all, like – He's not a one trick pony like a lot of wide receivers. He can do it all. He can his release his route running is amazing. Yeah, yeah. His release is incredible. He can catch 50 50 balls. Like I would not like Devontae, like Devontae Adams is in like that top upper echelon group of receivers. I yeah. quite wouldn't put AJ Brown in that group, you know. But not um, and I don't think AJ Brown will ever kind of reach a Devontae Adams level. I think he would still be pretty good. I think he'd be a top ten receiver. With a quarterback like Aaron Rodgers, um, like just a top 10 in the NFL, probably between like the 7 to 10 range. But I don't think you'd ever see him be like a top three with Aaron Rodgers, you know? Like <laughs> even now, like I don't think, like I don't think Cooper Cup's gonna repeat what he did last year either, especially with the addition of A Rod. So you, you think, know, do you just, think, do you think, quite so you think, before? Do you think McLaurin, uh, with a better quarterback, could be top three? Yes, yeah. he could be top five. He could consistently be a top five wide receiver. Top five. I give him that. I don't know about top three, um, because there's some pretty darn good receivers in the NFL. But I think with if you give McLaurin, if Terry McLaurin were to play in Green Bay, were to play in Denver, play someone with one of the top quarterbacks. Um, absolutely, I think he's a consistent top five wide receiver in the NFL, just on his skill set, um, his talent. And then now you actually have a quarterback that can actually make reads and see that, oh, this dude's open, you know, and get him yeah. the ball. I mean, I will say, yes, he has had eight starting quarterbacks. Carson Wentz, for how bad he is, he is the best quarterback that Terry McClellan will play with. Um, <laughs> And he can actually throw the ball. Carson Wentz isn't afraid to throw the ball. Carson Wentz has had – Carson Wentz can do it. They got two decent ones. The addition of John, Jahan Dotson, too, which is a young rookie that you have to you have to account for because his talent is great as well. Um, so that's also going to open things up for Terry, you know, because it's going to now take a lot of the defensive attention off Terry because yeah. you can't just double Terry, you know. There's yeah. another thing. Terry Terry McLaurin's faced a lot of double, double coverages in, in his career, and he still put up those numbers. They don't call him Scary Terry for nothing. I tell you that. Yeah, no, exactly. You don't get you don't get the nickname Scary Terry <laughs> for no reason. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, but and I just think consistently of of those three guys, I think in a long term thing, I think you can even expect with what we get with Terry now. That's what you can you can expect that year in and year out, even if like he doesn't get any better. You know. Mm -hmm which is still a fringe top 10 guy. Um, and, you know, so uh, I will definitely take that. It, he also of AJ and Debo. Um, I do worry about AJ's health. Like, eventually he's not going to catch up to him. I know there are receivers like Keaton Allen who were injury prone and then haven't missed a game due to injury since 2017, you know? Yeah. Um, so that's why I kind of don't, Fully buy like everyone's like oh the injury he's injury probably yeah like what you buy um was like, yeah that you can turn that around like Keenan Allen even said like the difference for him was it was just he was taking care better care of his body yeah like yeah. did a lot of recovery after games a lot of recovery exercises uh took better care like ate better you know and he's like and that's what's able to keep my body that's healthy like, you know yeah through playing football. So, I mean, ideally, if A.J. Brown can stay healthy, yeah. A.J. Brown's talent is amazing, don't get me wrong. Um, and A.J. Brown, the Titans did use him like Debo, too. 
I think that game that yeah. you were talking about where he had 170 they yards, they used him. They rushed him like like yeah. five or six times too, and he yeah. had like he had like another like 80 on the ground or something. Yeah, like that too. Yeah. You know, he had a big game, big game. and a rushing touchdown. Huge. Yeah. So, but if I'm just if I'm an NFL GM, I didn't. I just feel. I feel Terry McLaurin gives my team the best chance to win too, like because I feel like of those guys, he's never gonna he's never gonna put himself ahead of the team. He's never gonna make a like if he wants to be paid, he'll do it. He'll do it um, in a more quiet manner. He's not gonna go and be like, "Yo, pay me," you know. So, <laughs> I got you. Yeah, he's not gonna make a team. Not gonna be. He's not a, not very, gonna be a national. He's not a big ego. He's not a big ego. A big ego. Team, you know. Yeah, he's not a big ego. Yeah, just like he's more of a team-oriented guy, so I think I feel he gives you a much better chance to win than the other guys too, especially for a long-term time. You're not gonna have to worry about any problems with him. You're not gonna have to worry about him, you know, going to jail. None of that. Not yeah. making a big stink when he wants money. He's not gonna go in and be like, "Yo, trade me," you know, none of that. So yeah, I think from that ter- which gives which is a lot less stress for the coaching staff, the organization as a whole, too, you know. So, I mean, we'll see how it plays out. But, yeah, yeah. I'll go Terry. All right. All right. Now, before we go, I want to ask you this. Real short. Real short. Because I, I was seeing this. Drew Brees. You heard You heard about that? <laughs> Possible return? Possible return to football. Did you hear that? He's not going to be in the booth mm. this year. He said he's weighing his options. He don't know if he's going to he, – he was saying he don't know if he's going to go play golf. He don't know if he's going to play football. He don't – but he possibly could return to New Orleans. <laughs> it's all smoke and mirrors. <laughs> Listen, his arm was a noodle before he he left. I know it's probably is even it's worse now. So. He needs I think if he comes if he comes back to the Saints in any capacity, it'll be as like some sort of coach. Yeah. Or a front office guy. Something. Um, I don't think he's Drew. gonna come back as a player. Drew, don't come back. You had a great career. I, I, I think it's all smoke and mirrors. You had a great career. You had you are in the conversation of top quarterbacks all the time. Leave it at that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's all smoke. Mirrors. I'm not in the same division as Tom Brady. Like, <laughs> you know, you want like that? You want to come back? You're gonna come back just to play Tom Brady twice a year? <laughs> Fuck that! <laughs> I'm trying. If I'm coming out of retirement, like, am I still in the same division as Tom Brady? Yep. Oh, fuck that. I'm out. I'm staying retired. He's still in the league, right? Like, yep. However, no. But speaking of something along those same lines, Tom Brady agreed to a broadcasting deal after football. I've seen that. Here's the thing now. People are like, oh, well, that doesn't necessarily mean he's going to retire this year. I'm like, yeah, but they're not signing. I'm like, they're not signing you for fucking five years down the road. Exactly. They're not signing you for three years down the road when you sign one of those deals as a player. It's usually they sign you. At your last season, so I'm wondering if this is going to be actually Brady's last season. Oh, it'll it be is. an interesting thing to watch. But I think that's a likely possibility, and I think that little bit of foreshadowing with that broadcasting deal for Brady is that this is Brady's last year. See how much like, money officially. you see how much money hit that deal is worth, though. That's ridiculous. No, I didn't see how much that was worth. They were saying he's gonna be getting paid somewhere between twenty to thirty million a year. That's crazy. Jesus, Jesus, that's more than he ever got paid. That's what I'm saying. Play. That's insane. When I was here, I was like, "That's insane." I will quit now. I will quit football now and go. <laughs> Give me that twenty to thirty million. Well, it's all zero. Oh, I mean, other but other players who do the same thing are not fetching that money for the same job. Like, <laughs> that's like Mahomes. That's like Mahomes level money. Like 
in like the broadcasting world in the broadcasting um, world yeah that's crazy but it's just because it's his knowledge like and everyone wants like everybody wants every network to- yeah wants his knowledge yeah on on that like if you watch um i don't know if you watched any of the monday night games from this past year where they had peyton and eli yeah they would yeah. do the simulcast on espn yeah. too with Peyton and Eli doing it just from like yeah. their homes or whatever. But it was great. Cause there was a few times like where they, there was one where they had Russell Wilson on, they had Tom Brady on, but it was great because you could see, you get to watch like Tom and Peyton try to out football each other. Like they're flexing their football knowledge, like who's smarter, you know? And then, uh, yeah, same with like Russ. And it's just great. It's a lot great watching them, like try to out football yeah. each other, like from yeah. the X's and O stand. And you're like, oh, okay, you know. Oh, Peyton was great with them X's and O's. Now I tell you that. Peyton was one of the. the oh yeah, Peyton the was. Top. Peyton was great. Yeah. All right. Well, that does it for our show today, guys. The Dynasty Show. Comment, <laughs> like, check us out. Facebook, Twitter. Yeah, make sure you Facebook like, comment, and May subscribe. Hook Facebook now. Oh, we have a Facebook now. Yeah, May hooked us up with a Facebook. I got to get the um, the password and stuff to get on, but I see she got us a Facebook though. So yeah, guys, nice. Facebook, so Twitter, next, next Instagram, Instagram YouTube, Apple Music, Spotify. Check us out. Soon to be on MySpace too. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, like, comment, subscribe, uh, you know what to do. Uh, and as always, stay, stay tuned for more. Yes, sir. Boy. <laughs>